Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Final Cut Help. My name is Rich Harrington, and today we have a special guest, Robbie Carmen, who's a colorist as well as an author and an online trainer. Today, Robbie's going to show us some information about using tracking to really take your vignettes and move them around the screen, right? Yeah, you know, vignettes are a tool that a colorist uses all the time to isolate a specific object or a person on screen. Mm -hmm. And the example I want to give you today is a way of using a stylized vignette, but we have a problem with this vignette. So sort of a power window sort of? Sort of like a power window, but we're going to see in a minute that the vignette, as stock out of color, doesn't move with the object on screen. So we want to create a vignette that we can then track and follow an object, or a person in this case, around screen. Is this fast? It's very fast. Good. Well, let's see it. Okay. So um, the shot I have here is a shot of myself, actually. Um, and I play in a band, and I'm in a music video, so I shoot my own stuff. I color my own stuff. And the look I was going for on this shot was sort of a spotlight effect, but, you know, low budget. I didn't have the, you know, the gaffers and stuff on set to actually do the spotlight effect. So, of course, I said, let's fix it in post. Right. So let's actually play this clip first. I'm going to select the color timeline and just play it. And what you'll notice as it plays is I'm moving back and forth on screen from right to left. Okay. Well, creating the spotlight effect is very easy. Let me navigate to the beginning of the clip by hitting the up arrow. Remember, up and down arrows allow you to navigate to the beginning and the end of the clip. And I'm going to come to the secondaries tab. That's the third tab over. And I'm going to first make sure that I enable the secondaries tab or the secondaries room. If I don't click this button, anything that I do in this room won't actually be seen. Now, if you start to make a change, you forget to click Enable, then you click Enable, does it store what you've done? Absolutely. And I would be lying to you if I didn't do that a thousand times a day and realize that, oh, I forgot to click the Enable button. No problem. So I'm going to click the Enable button. And then I'm going to come down to the Vignette Controls, which are at the bottom of the Secondaries room. And I'm going to click on Vignette. And when I click on Vignette, you'll notice that it puts some on-screen controls here on the Previews tab. Mm -hmm. And the default shape for a vignette is a circle. I could change this to other things, like a square or a user-defined shape. And if you wanted to just sort of squash it to a little more oval-like, you could do that? Yeah, there's a couple ways of doing that. If you're a sort of a numbers guy, you could use the, on, uh, the uh, parameter controls right here underneath the Previews tab. Mm -hmm. Or if you're more like me, I like to use the on-screen controls. And so using the on-screen controls, I can click in the middle of the vignette to position it where I want. And then I can use these little boxes on the edge of the vignette to adjust its aspect ratio, its size, and move it around. Okay. And then one more thing, if I actually right click on one of the boxes on the corner and drag, I can rotate the vignette. Very flexible. Yeah, it's very flexible. So I've got this vignette placed roughly around my face. Let's position it somewhere like there. That works. And maybe make it a touch bigger, something like that. Okay. And let's add some softness to the vignette. The reason we always want to add softness to vignettes is so we don't see the hard edges of the shape. Right. So A spotlight in real life would have some fall off. Absolutely. So I'm going to add quite a bit of softness here. And I'm just going to use my middle mouse button here in the softness parameter and roll up. Now, you'll notice this goes quite slow. If you hold the Option key and then use your scroll wheel, you can make a parameter adjustment much quicker. And if you're using the default operating system setup, you're going to want to launch the control panel and change the mouse so your middle button is a third button, not expose. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So now that I have the basic uh, vignette going on, I want to come up to the top of the secondaries room, and there's a pull-down called Control. Now, what the Control pull-down lets me do is affect things that are inside of the shape or outside of the shape. Okay. Well, in this case, I actually want to switch this to the outside because I want to affect the brightness outside of the shape. So it's going to leave the exposure inside the shape alone and pull the outside area down. Absolutely. Okay. So now that I'm switched to outside, I'm going to use my color balance controls here at the top of the room, specifically the contrast slider and the highlight co uh, color balance control. And I'm going to click on that tab and drag down until I get a pretty beefy spotlight effect going on there. Now, why did you choose highlights versus, say, midtones? Well, in this case, it really wouldn't matter because I'm making it so dark. Um, highlights are going to affect the brightest portions of the image the most down to roughly the midtones. There's a little bit of overlap there. I could do both if I really, really wanted to get it dark. But in this case, using the highlight contrast slider was fine for me. Maybe just go a touch darker as well. If I want to adjust the softness even more, I can do that. Okay, so now that I have the vignette here, let's just play this clip real quick. And what you're going to see as it plays is right about there, I run into the edge of the vignette. I guess the spotlight operator kind of fell asleep on the job. Sure. But we can fix this very easily with a track. So I'm going to stop playback, and then what I'm going to do is switch over to the geometries room. I'm going to click on the geometries room, 
And then I'm going to click on the tracking tab, which is in the bottom right hand corner of the room. And people shouldn't get bothered. The geometry shows you the clip before the secondary color correction. That is correct. It shows you the original clip. Okay. Because you might want to track something that is being affected by the darkening. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So there's two ways of doing a track an automatic track and an manual track. In this case, we're going to do an automatic track because it's easy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is easy is good. Easy is very good. <laughs> what I'm going to do is click on the new button here. And when I click on the new button, in the middle of the uh, screen here, I have two boxes. The outside box is my search area. I want to make this search area big enough so as it starts tracking the object, the object that I'm tracking never leaves the search area. And then the inside box is my actual target. That's what I actually want to track. Now, two rules about this. Don't make the search area so big that you know, it's searching the entire screen. Because if you do, your track is going to take a long time to process. Right. And then with the target, you want to place it on something on screen, in this case my face, that has a lot of contrast or has a hard to find edge. So your nostril? Yeah, my nostril could work. Let's try that right around there. And now that I've placed the, uh, the search box and the target box, I'm simply going to hit process. And as I do that, the image starts processing and tracking around on screen. I think this is the first time I've ever seen motion tracking with a nostril, but it's working very well. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, nostrils are one of the best things to track. <laughs> so one uh, key thing about this, though, notice down here in the color timeline, I have a progress bar as it's tracking. Mm -hmm. Now, I just happen to be tracking this from the beginning of the clip, but tracking will begin from wherever your playhead is positioned in the clip. Okay. So if you only wanted to track, say, the middle to the end, you'd first position your playhead in the middle of the clip and then process your tracker. Okay. One more thing to notice. After the tracking's complete, up here in the upper right hand corner of the geometry room, I have a status that's gone green, indicating that the track has been completed and has been successful. But also notice, next to the status, there's an ID for the track. Its ID right now is track one. So I'm gonna click back into the secondaries room and come back down to my vignette controls and here I have a little input box that says use tracker. Now remember this ID that we had just a second ago? Number one. I'm going to enter number one here in the box and hit return. And you'll notice that your vignette moves a little bit, but we can reposition it however I want. And now let's play the clip. And so once you've repositioned it, it's going to use that as its relative starting position. Correct. Then use the tracking data to move it around. Correct. And now if you look in the preview area, that you can see that the vignette is actually following me around screen and it really does simulate that spotlight effect of a spotlight operator following somebody on stage. Very nice. That worked well. Good. Well, hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Final Cut Help. You can find out more about Robbie over at his website, robbiecarman.net. And you also have some online training for color that people could check out. Yes, I do. On lynda.com. Great. Thanks again for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Final Cut Help. Be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out their online forums with color and learn a whole lot more. Thanks again.